Welcome to our online worship service with Augustana Lutheran Church, Boone, Iowa. Today's message comes from Visitation Pastor Matthew Martins. Welcome to online worship at Augustana Lutheran Church, Boone, Iowa, for September the 13th, 2020. As usual, we invite you to light a candle at home as I have lit one here, and remember that Christ is the light of the world. He's the Savior we gather around, and he sends us out into the world to be his lights, shining with his love for others. We are having Sunday outdoor worship now. It's drive-in in the parking lot at 9.30 on Sunday morning. Bring your own lawn chair, or you're welcome to remain in your vehicle. We ask that you wear a mask and practice social distancing. The online worship will continue as usual. In prayer, we are remembering those who have been sick, especially Karen Hesser and Dick Martin and the bereaved, especially the family of Donna Knudsen. In our gospel, Jesus calls us to forgive as we have been forgiven. And in doing so, he promises we will find the fullness of his life and love at work within us. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in forgiving others and in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis. Realizing that their father Jacob was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, our father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of God. Joseph wept when they spoke this way to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel words are from the 18th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before the master saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and threw him into prison until he would pay his debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? 
And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. An elderly woman met with her pastor to discuss her funeral plans. She said, there are two things I know I want for sure. First of all, I wish to be cremated. And secondly, I wish to have my ashes sprinkled over the local Walmart store. The pastor was mystified. What do you mean? Have your ashes sprinkled over the Walmart store? But why? And the woman said, well, then I can be sure that my kids will visit me at least twice a week. The pastor had to spend a little time with this lady, helping her unload her pain and helping her on the road to forgiveness. Jesus makes it clear in our gospel that we are to forgive because we have been forgiven so very much. In Jewish tradition, it was common to forgive the one who offended you three times. Peter thinks he's being so generous when he suggests that he would forgive someone seven times. But Jesus says, oh, that would only be scratching the surface of what God forgives. You must forgive 77 times. And he lifts up an outrageously excessive example to get his point across. That servant who owed his master the staggering, astounding amount of 10,000 talents, that's equal to $10 million today. How would a servant even get that much in debt to his master? But remember, a parable is a story trying to make a point. The servant never could repay such a debt. He would have to spend the rest of his life in prison. And so he pleads for mercy. And his master suddenly, graciously, generously, incredibly forgives him that entire astounding amount, $10 million. The servant goes right out and sees a fellow servant who owes him 100 denarii, that's like equal to $100, takes him by the throat, insists on immediate payment, throws his fellow servant into jail when he can't pay it. This greatly distresses the other servants who report on him to their master. And the king summons the servant back and withdraws his forgiveness. By refusing to forgive his fellow servant, this unforgiving servant has deprived himself of forgiveness. He locks himself in a prison of his own making. At the center of the parable is the master, with a heart so big, so forgiving, that it's beyond description. God is that master. And through Jesus coming into our world is that forgiving. God, who has Jesus hoist on his shoulders, that million dollars, $10 million worth of our wrongs, our sins, our shortcomings, our failures. Jesus pays that entire debt for us on his cross at Calvary. On the cross, he's continuing to forgive, even while he's hanging there, forgives that thief on one side, the thief who begs for his mercy. And Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. And then forgives his torturers. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Even from the cross, his forgiving mercy continues to be extended. Jesus gives us that example, that forgiveness, so that we can forgive others. He forgives us 10 million so we can forgive our fellow person $100 worth of mere nothing compared to what he has forgiven us. That's what he asks of us, the Lord who is the center and core of God's forgiveness. He asks us to forgive in turn. One of the reasons Jesus is so insistent about forgiving is not only because God has forgiven so much, but also 
because thereby we find inner healing and wholeness. The one who sinned against us is made free and finds wholeness, and we do for ourselves as well. We don't end up in a prison of our own making, like that servant did in the gospel story. We don't end up ruined by resentment, by hatred, by anger, by bad feelings toward the one who offended us. Instead, when we forgive, we're set free to live in joy and to find meaning once again. Business guru Brian Tracy was writing a book called Inspiring Others to Greatness. And in a Facebook blurb, a man in the Netherlands who followed Tracy's writings sat down and wrote Tracy a letter about his own experience. This guy in the Netherlands said to him, you know, I had a hard knock life. My parents and siblings never loved me. They were always critiquing me. Then I made a bad marriage and it ended with a lot of acrimony. And my ex turned my kids against me too. And then my business partner, whom I'd worked with for so many years, betrayed me and I lost all my money and my business. I had nothing left. And then I got so sick, sicker than I'd ever been in my life. I went to the doctor, he did a battery of tests. He said, your immune system is completely gone. You have multiple organ failure. You have about six months to live. Go home, write your will, make peace with anybody you need to. That's all that I have to offer you. So this fellow said he went home and he completed his will, he didn't have hardly any assets left anyway, and then he determined he would make peace with those who had hurt him. And he thought to himself, first of all, I'll tell them that I need their forgiveness, and then I'll see if they'll forgive me too. He contacted his parents and siblings. He poured out his sorrow over the ways he had hurt them and was amazed to hear them saying they were sorry too. And his family, to his great amazement, was reconciled. Buoyed up by that experience, he went next to his ex-wife. Started out the same way, I'm so sorry for wherever I hurt you. And pretty soon she was weeping and asking his forgiveness for how their marriage had ended so badly. And when he had reconciled with her, he won his kid's affection back as well. And finally, the one that was hardest for him, he went to the business partner, the friend who had betrayed him. He begged him for forgiveness for his wrongs. And pretty soon, his business partner was pouring out sorrow for the way he had hurt his partner. They too were reconciled. All of this happened over about a five-month period. And the man noticed he was feeling better day by day, feeling more energy, feeling stronger. He went back to the same doctor and the doctor did another battery of tests and said, uh, astonishingly, you are symptom free. I think you're going to outlive me. The man said to the doctor, all I did was what you told me to do, but each person I forgave and was forgiven by, I began to be, feel better and stronger. Well, the book writer, Brian Tracy, took this story and made it the centerpiece of his book, which became a bestseller. This story of how we are inspired to greatness by someone who knows how to forgive and help others heal and become whole and find joy and meaning in life again. Lance Morrow, writing about the topic of forgiveness, says, not to forgive is to be imprisoned by the past, by old grievances that do not permit life to proceed. Not to forgive is to yield yourself to someone else's control, to be locked in a cycle of revenge, to be endlessly devoured by the past. Forgiveness frees the forgiver and the forgiven one to create a new beginning out of past pain. When we forgive, we ride the crest of love's cosmic wave. 
We walk in stride with God, the author of forgiveness. What a description. Wouldn't you too like to ride the crest of God's cosmic wave of love and walk in stride with God, the greatest of all forgivers? This parable of Jesus does not directly answer one important question. One question that has bothered many people through the ages, and that is, would Jesus have forgiven this unforgiving servant? Would he finally have let him out of prison and let him have a new start? The answer is, Jesus has already handed the key to this man to release himself from prison. The key is his forgiving his fellow servant who's right there beside him in prison. As soon as he has forgiven him, he will be released from prison as well and have a fresh start, a new beginning in life. Byron Johnson works as a social worker in the Texas prison system in and around the prisons in Houston. He is the one who interviews the inmates who are coming up for their parole board hearing to see whether their lives have changed, whether they've gotten their act together, whether they're getting ready to be released from prison. One prisoner that he interviewed was Ron Flowers, who 14 years before had been part of a drive-by shooting, and he had killed the awful term is collateral damage. A young girl, 11 years old, D.D. Washington, who was in the wrong place at the wrong time and was killed in that drive-by incident. In prison, Ron Flowers told how he became a Christian, how he joined a faith-based Bible study fellowship and soon was co-leading it. Meanwhile, in a prison 20 miles from there, Ron Flowers came to know one of the volunteer helpers at the prison named Arnetta Washington. And one day Arnetta asked him, have you ever interviewed a guy named Ron Flowers? And it turned out that Byron had just finished interviewing Ron. And Byron said, you're Dee Dee Washington's mom, aren't you? And Arnetta said, yes. Well, Ron Flowers wants to talk to you. A meeting was arranged. Ron came into the room where Arnetta was waiting. The first words he blurted out were, I'm so terribly sorry for killing your daughter. All these years, I've been hoping you might forgive me. And Arnetta, who had been filled with so much bitterness, so much anger, so much hatred for this man through those years, was amazed at what came out of her mouth. I forgive you. It's what the Lord would want me to do. And that day, those two began to talk. And Arnetta told Byron, the social worker, that was the day I got my life back. That was the day everything changed for me. She forgave Ron Flowers. The two of them became friends over the years. She went to his parole board hearing. She said he's a changed man now. He has a different life now. He's a new person. And in 1997, Ron Flowers was released from prison. He got a job. He married. He had a family of his own. Arnetta stayed in touch with him and his family. They mutually supported each other until her death in 2007. She died full of peace that only forgiveness can bring. We see how in forgiving Ron, she set him free to a new beginning, a fresh start. But just as truly, she set herself free for a fresh start as well. Who needs your forgiveness today? Maybe a parent, maybe a sibling, a spouse, or a child, an ex or an in-law, someone who's been your boss or someone who's been a neighbor. 
Whoever it is, Jesus says, forgive. Because God has forgiven us so much. Because we find healing and wholeness for our inner being, a new lease on life when we forgive. Because we can thereby let another person out of prison and ourself out of prison as well for a fresh start, a new beginning. Amen. We turn now to a time of prayer. Gracious God, your forgiveness toward us is generous beyond measure, untiring, unfailing. Help us forgive those who sin against us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, our meager forgiveness toward others. Make us eager to confess our wrongs, heal strained relationships, and strive toward understanding and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, our half-hearted forgiveness in our family life. Show us the way to wholehearted letting go of hurts so that those closest to us may find joy and meaning in life and we ourselves may find a fresh start. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, our lukewarm forgiveness in church life and fellowship. Open in us the way to enthusiastic offering and receiving of forgiveness so we don't lock ourselves in a prison of our own making, but unlock the door to renewed life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, our shallow forgiveness in national life. Kindle in us deep down forgiveness for all that now separates and divides us so that we can find a new national purpose, resolve, and unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, for the smallness of our gratitude in thanking you for so many blessings, for neighbors who help us clean up after a storm, for rainfall that helps alleviate extreme drought, for students and teachers and staff who try hard to make the school year safe, for so many blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, for an apathetic attitude toward those who are sick, sorrowing, and fearful. Increase in us lively and hearty care for those who need to experience your love through us, especially Karen Hesser, Dick Martin, and the family of Donna Knutson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, for compassion fatigue toward those who suffer from COVID-19, those who have lost so much in the wildfires and in storms and other disasters, those who are hungry, homeless, and in refugee camps. Help us support and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us now, Lord, to forgive others as you have so richly forgiven us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending words. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Thanks be to God.